This is question 10 from paper 33 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that will bring you to my playlist that has all the solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it before looking at this solution. I think it's fair to say this is the hardest question in this paper. But then again, some people find one question harder than another for unknown reasons. Uh, but this is a semicircle, a semi-sphere uh, filled with water, uh, filled to the top. Whereas uh, the picture shows halfway. That's just um, telling us that the war is an unknown point. They'll give us an equation, in fact. This equation is for this, not the halfway point, for any point. This equation tells us the volume of the water at any height here. They tell us it starts full at zero time, at t equals zero, and it ends empty at t equals 40. Even that information is quite hard to get. You have to read through the question carefully. Hopefully that description uh, was enough to explain it. They tell us more then. They tell us that, well, they explain there's a tap at the very bottom where the water comes out. But they tell us that the rate of that flow is proportional to the square root of h. Now it's important to read that question properly. The rate of the flow. So the rate of how much water is coming out. Rate is the change in time. But how much volume comes out, the flow of the water comes out, you have to figure out that that's the change of volume. The change of volume is that. And they tell us it's proportional to the square root of h. So that's another piece of information we need. To, we, it's easy to change proportionality. Uh, we just put it equals to some sort of constant. Um, some constant k square root of h. Now k um, is actually less than zero. We can tell that. Because the volume is getting smaller. H is um, a height. It's a, it's a positive number. If the, if the volume is getting smaller, this must be a negative number overall. If H is positive, well, K must be negative. So we'll just point that out. K is less than zero. All right, what other information? I think that's enough information for us to start this question. But you need, did need to invent this part. This, is going to be, this line here is going to be very important. Part one, they ask us to find dh dt. Now, that's quite hard for people. We have no formula for h, so we can't just differentiate with t. So what do we need to use here? Well, we need to know is that we have v in terms of h. So if you wanted to get a dh somewhere, that would be an option. We can differentiate the v. So at least now there's a dh appearing in our question. And we want dh. We want dh dt. And we do. We also found a dt. You would have had to find that as well. And so let's do this. Let's differentiate this. It's just straightforward enough. Uh, there's a constant. It gets ignored. So we can do each of these terms then. Uh, this term, h2 uh, uh, multiplied by this is 6. Or is a constant and h loses a value. Then minus 3 multiplied by h loses a value to x squared. If that made sense. <laughs> Alright, so that is dv dh. Now we want dh dt. This comes up a lot, so this is something you're expected to see quite easily. That we can get dh dt as this as well. dv um, dt and dv dt. And we have both these. dv dt is here. And dh dt is just this upside down. So if we just, um, this one divided by this one. Let's write it again. dv dt divided by um, dv dh. They'll cancel out and we'll be left with dh dt. So let's put that together. We get, um, here it is here, k multiplied by square root of h divided by this. Really, I'm just John down. I'll clean it up a bit to make it look like their answer. Because they've given us this answer already. It doesn't quite look like this yet. Uh, 3h squared. Now they wanted the answer, I won't write it out again, you can see it on the question, hopefully you have it up on a screen somewhere in front of you. Um, it is minus b divided by 2 or h to the half minus h3 over 2. So this is the point you probably should look at that and go, oh, it's not quite what I have. Can I get, make it look similar? And you can. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, I think I have enough room here, let's go ahead and do it here. If we multiply top and bottom by 3, 
this will disappear and a tree will appear up here. If we divide top and bottom by pi, this will disappear and a pi will appear up here. So we'll be left on top row, we'd have a k, a tree k, divided by pi, and square root of h. But square root of h can divide into the top and into the bottom. Everybody has a h. So we'll leave this on the top, and on the bottom we will get 6 or... <clears throat> and h, we divide it by square root of h, so we're left with a square root of h, or h to the half, minus 3, um, again, h to the half goes into this, and we're left with 3 over 2. So Remember, we divided the top by h to the half, that's gone. This is square root of h is h to the half. Um, we divide top by h to the half, and bottom by h to the half. h squared divided by h to the half, h over 2. All right, and as well, actually, I probably should have done this last time. We can divide everyone by three. Three goes into that, three goes into that, three goes into this, leaving two. And I believe, no, not quite, they have a B, whereas we have this. It's the same thing, really. They tell us they have a positive constant, whereas we have K over pi. And remember, K was negative. So um, that's where, I, if, I, if I, you want to get rid of this and put a B in, and they do, we want a b and a minus there. That must mean b is equal to minus k over pi. Um, so you might want to point that out. They're a little un... They don't exactly uh, spell out that they want something like that. I think if you had left it the way it was, that would have been fine. Um, they, If you ignore their b, pretty much. All they said is they wanted a positive constant here. I guess if you had not put the minus here, they would be probably right to take a mark away. Because if you left k divided by pi, that's actually a negative constant. That's where this minus appeared from. If you got, want to get rid of the negative constant, just multiply it by a minus. So that's part A. I hope that explained it. Really difficult question. So many leaps of logic that's needed. So you will not be on your own if you had trouble answering this. Um, put questions in the comments and I'll do my best to help you even more. Um, other than that, we'll, I'll rub this out, I'll leave this, uh, maybe I'll just leave it here, and we'll do part B. I've actually rubbed everything out, because part B, I want to point this out, part B, you did not need any information. from part, You did not need to get part A, is what I mean. And they gave you enough information. This answer they've given you at the end of part A is enough to start part B. So if you were very confused by it, simply do part B on its own. And if you get no marks, hopefully you get one or two marks from part A, brilliant but you can still do part B. So what they ask you to do is solve this differential equations uh, and obtain an expression for T in terms of H and R. So this is a differential, um, a differential equation, the simple ones we do at least. All we need to do is get all the H's with the DH and all the T's with the DT. So let's uh, move the this bottom row over here. We will get um, two or H to the half minus h3 over 2, and that's dh, put a bracket around that, equals, uh, we'll leave minus b, it doesn't involve, it doesn't uh, have anything in it, and then dt. Now some students get confused here, there's no t's. What, what goes with the tt's? All the t's, the, the zero t's, there's zero t's here. So that's, let's find the way it is. And we can integrate both sides, integrate this side, integrate here. Remember, the b is a constant, he can stay outside it all. And it's fairly straightforward integrations. Um, we have, what's the, I'm not sure what this line is. Oh, it's a bracket from here. So we integrate each of these terms here. We get, uh, let's see, 2 or h gets uh, 1, add 1 to it, we get 3 over 2. And then multiply, or well, sorry, divide by 3 over 2, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. This guy here is minus h5 over 2, adding 1 on. Dividing by 5 over 2 is like multiplying by 2 over 5. Uh, plus some sort of constant um, is equal. I'll leave the constant because I'll just add one constant for both of them. When we integrate, this adds a constant, this adds a constant. Two constants added together, or the difference of two constants taken away, is just some other constant. So I'll just add one big constant at the end. 
Uh, this is minus b, and the integral of, this is not 0, I think I might have said there's nothing there, it's 1. There's a 1 there, it's an integral of 1. And uh, the integral of 1 is t, or is whatever we're integrating by. Um, yeah, this is just, uh, I don't know, so many students don't know this, but 1, this is like t to the power of 0 there, dt. Because um, that's, t to the power of 0 is everywhere, <laughs> multiplied by everything pretty much. So that's where we're adding this 1 onto this to get t to the power of 1. Dividing by 1 well, doesn't do anything. So that's where that comes from. Um, or lots of students just remember when you integrate a constant, a t appears. That's fine as well. Okay, so we need to add one of these constants. I don't care where you put it or which one. It'll mean your answer will be slightly different to other people's. You could get a plus or a minus. But you do need to add some sort of constant. If you added the constant here, uh, and you look at somebody else's answer, your answer might be minus compared to theirs, but still a constant. Right, uh, let's see, what else then we need? We need to get t, and something equals to t. So t is on its own here, so this should be easy. Uh, bring the c over, we get, um, let's do it all in one line. We're gonna take a c away from over here and then divide by minus b. So uh, let's see, we get two over three, Oh, this is 4 over 3. My, my apologies. <laughs> 2 multiplied by 2, I should be able to do that. 4 over 3 or h, 3 over 2, um, minus 2 over 5, h to the power of 5 over 2, and minus c, all divided by minus b. I'll divide these minus. Actually, let's do this now. Uh, divide the minus in, we get that's a minus, that's a plus, that's a plus. And we might write these a little different in a moment. And all of this equals t. Some students end it there. You would lose a mark or two because the examiner has no idea what c is. You could argue they know what b is. They gave you b. Uh, so maybe I could argue leaving this one here. But certainly you made c up, so you better tell them what it is. And while we're out, we can also tell them what b is. Because they give us two pieces of information. We have two unknowns here. This is an equation, t in terms of or and h. Um, if we can find, we know what O and H is at different times. Um, so we can find out what B and C is probably. And the two bits of information are all the way back in part A. They tell us when the tank is empty, time is 14. And they tell us when the tank is full, time is zero. That's two pieces of information. Because we know lots about H. It's only H and, uh, no, O is a constant. It's only H here that changes. We know what H is equal when the tank's full. H is equal to OR. So basically, let's, let's write this again. I'll have to do it over here. We get minus 4 over 3. And we'll change H to an OR. OR multiplied by this. We'll get an OR to 5 over 2 plus 2 over 5. Um, OR to 5 over 2 as well. I'm changing H to an OR. Plus C. Um, divided by b is equal to zero. The tank is full, time is equal to zero. This is all, that information comes from uh, part a. When the tank is full, time is zero. Tank is full, h is equal to or, time is equal to zero. So that's what you sort of need to do. Multiply both sides by b, b is not zero, so that's fine. Uh, zero multiplied by b, it just disappears. And uh, let's, we want to find out what C is. Okay, so take C over here. C uh, turns to a minus. Let's change both their signs. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to write it out again. Let's add these together first. So the OR to the power of 5 over 2 is in both of them. So we can take that outside. So it's really just uh, 2 fifths minus 4 thirds. I'd suggest doing that in a calculator. But we can put them both into 15 and that's uh, 6 15s take away 20 15s. So that's minus 14 15, 15s is equal to minus C. Change the two minuses. Uh, that just tells us the C is equal 14 over 15, 5 to the power of, uh, or to the power of 5 over 2. And um, then for B, uh, I thought there was an easier way. No, actually, yeah, this works out quite easy now that I think about it. For B, we know when the tank is empty, that's when H is equal to zero. T 
time is equal to 14. So let's put that in, that's an easy one. Zero, that's gone. Zero, that's gone. We're just left with C divided by B is equal to 14. And um, that means B must equal to C divided by 14. That means B must equal to this divided by 14, which is one over 15, just the 14s cancel. One over 15 or to the five over two. So we know what B is then. So let's write this one last time. Um, T is equal, we'll change, yeah, let's write the positive number first. Uh, two over five, H to the five over two, um, plus, we'll put C in next, plus 14 over 15, or to the five over two, minus, four over three or times h to the three over two all divided by this is the correct answer by the way this is it's a mess i know all divided by b which is one over 15 or to the five over two that will get you full marks i'll, I'll maybe clean it up with a little bit um here but that that's the i, I bet when i clean it up i'll i'll confirm it's the correct answer I don't think I've made any mistakes there. I'll, I'll clear this out of the way and we can fit a bit here, but hopefully you can, you can just pause the video and rewind for anything so I don't need to worry about rubbing it out. Um, yes, the, the answer they give in the, um, online, you find in the answer section is a little different. So let's clean this up and see if we can make it look the same. But this is fine. There's some obvious ones. We could make, we can multiply everything by 15 on the top and the bottom. And let's see, if we multiply this by 15, it'd be like multiplying 2 by 3, we'll get 6H, actually let's bring this all the way up here. Um, multiply this by 15, we get 6H5 over 2. Multiply this by 15, we get 14 or 5 over 2. And uh, multiply this by 15, we get minus 20 or h 3 over 2, all divided by or 5 over 2. Um, we can divide this into each of them separately and get some neater looking things. This one will come out 6. H, they're both 5 over 2, the two H's here. So we can just have H over or, sorry, the two um, variables. <coughs> sorry, or is not a variable. So that's 5 over 2 of both. And that's the neatest way to make that look. Uh, let's see, or can go into this, that'll just cancel, we're just left with 14. And this one here, or will cancel with one of these, or two halves of them. Um, so we'll be left with minus 20, and we'll be left with, once or cancels into this, let's cancel it here, or cancel it, we'll be left with 3 over 2. 3 over 2 saves this 3 over 2, so we can just put H over or, and then both to the power of 3 over 2. And that, uh, if I just double check, is the correct answer. I can't see it. So if you're watching this video right now, it is the correct answer because I'll have double checked myself and otherwise I'll have changed it. So that's the full marks. Um, although, like I said, they will give you full marks for this. I'd like to see maybe the 15 disappear, but I don't think they would care too much about um, getting it exactly down to here. Maybe 15 seems easy to get rid of. Other than that, they would give you full marks for this. A very hard question. Um, so many students would have not got uh, the C and the B. They would have left this as their answer. Probably would have lost a mark or two. Um, but yeah, the hardest question in the exam, if you did get most of that, congratulations. That's the last question in this paper. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And uh, check out my channel for other um, other solutions. Try go through, go through each video. Try the question first. Watch the solution. Hopefully, it helps you in your exams. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.